Number three, it is recommended for the person to be in a state of wudu and tahara. Recommended, not must. Why? Because you make dua and dhikr when you leave the bathroom, when you wake up from sleep. So obviously it's not a must, but it is recommended. What's the proof that it's recommended? Because in Muhajir ibn Qunfud, he said, I give salam to the Prophet He said, Assalamu alaikum. And he didn't reply to me. And Nabi Sallallahu was making wudu. After he finished wudu, he said, Wa alaikum salam. I didn't want to mention Allah's name, as salam, and make this dhikr while I'm not in a state of tahara. Okay? That's why Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah, who narrated this narration, yakrah an yakra aw yadkur Allah hatta yadatahar. He used to dislike to read Quran or to mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without having wudu, reports of Imam Ahmad rahimahullah. Also, it is good to purify the tongue with siwak or any other method that can make the mouth smell good. And in Nawi rahimahullah said that, and Ibn Lani Shafi'i said that. Why? Because in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I would like to mention Allah while I'm in a state of tahara, purity. And part of the purity is the wudu, part of the purity to purify your mouth. And that can be done by any method. You can make your breath fresh, you know, before you making a dhikr. Also, one of the etiquette facing the Qibla. And al-Shawkani rahimahullah said, it is recommended because in Salah we face the Qibla. And the Salah is all about Dua. But it's not must, it's just a recommended. Aisha radiallahu anha, she used to read her Quran, her word, her daily adhkar and reciting Quran, while she is laying down in her bed. Not necessarily facing the Qibla. As in Nawi rahimahullah mentioned that in his book al adhkar Another etiquette is choosing the time, the location, and the situation where the dua and dhikr most likely to be answered. So for example, when it comes to location, the masajid, and the best of all masajid, al uh, uh, Mecca, uh, then uh, Medina, Al-Aqsa, okay? Fi buyutin adina Allahu an turfa'a yudhkara fi hasmu. Homes that Allah allowed to be raised and his name to be mentioned in it. So al-masajid is a place that the Prophet said, this masjid is for dhikrullah. Okay, making dhikr in a, in a, in a, a places of virtue, like what? The mountain of Arafah, but in the day of Arafah, not outside the day of Arafah. Going to Arafah, outside Arafah, for the purpose of thinking that this is a special virtue of making dua, there is bid'ah. Because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, none of the Sahaba or the Tabi'een did that. Timing, like the last third of the night, after Fajr, and they are the best time during the day. After Fajr and the last third of the night as an Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah said. Uh, uh, also, the first 10 days of the Hijjah, the month of Ramadan, last 10, month, last 10 nights of Ramadan, Laylatul Qadr, the day of Jumu'ah has a, a short period of time where the dua is accepted. In the beginning of the day and the end of the day, highly recommended to make dhikr, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَاسْجُدْ لَهُ وَسَبِّحْهُ لَيْلًا طَوِيلًا And mention the name of your Lord in morning and evening. And during the night, prostrate to Him and exalt, uh, exalt Him uh, uh, alone uh, part of the night. فَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا وَمِنْ آنَاءِ اللَّيْلِ فَسَبِّحْ وَأَطْرَافَ النَّهَارِ لَعَلَّكَ تَرُضَى So be patient over what they say and exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with praise of your Lord before the rising of the sun and before its setting. And during periods of the night, also mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, exalt Him, and at the ends of the day, that you may be satisfied. Situation, like when you traveler, supplication of traveler is acceptable. While the rain is coming down, the Prophet said that's one of the situations where the dua is acceptable. When the iqama is called, right at the adhan. So all these situations also recommended for you to make dua during this situation. Part of the etiquette, to have khushur while making dhikr. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفًا وَدُونَ الْجَهْرِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْأَصَالِ وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ Remember your Lord within yourself in humility, khushu' and 
uh, 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 in fear without being apparent in speech and don't talk loud in the morning and in the evening and do not be among the heedless. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah said khifa it means khushu' which is humility mixed with fear. Also in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said don't apparent in your speech don't basically uh, uh, be out loud. وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفًا وَدُونَ الْجَهْرِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ And remember your Lord within yourself in humility and in fear without being apparent in speech, without going out loud. Ibn Abbas said to hear yourself, but the one next to you will not hear you. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, once he came in Sahih Bukhari Muslim, and he saw the Sahaba radiallahu anhum raising their uh, uh, voice with dua, Ya Rabbi, Ya Allah. Then he said, calm down. Lower your voice. You're not calling upon someone who is deaf, or someone who can't hear you, or someone who's absent. You are calling someone who's so close to you, more than your, the neck of your camel to you. So very close to you. You didn't need to scream. So that's why the sunnah is to lower your voice when you make any type of du'a. Uh, 